Okay, I'm sorry again. So, we're looking at the uh, personal account of Rabbi Yosef Meshash, about his family and, and many other Moroccan Jews, and how they got to Eretz Yisrael. So, he speaks about, he looks at the, uh, the statements of the rabbis about the importance of living in Eretz Yisrael, and about the, uh, and reading, of course, in the Torah, about the scouts, the Maglim, who were punished severely for bad-mouthing Eretz Yisrael, and many other uh, stories of how the rabbis uh, wanted to uh, to get to Israel. One of the rabbis of the Gemara says, Rabbi Hiya Bar Gamda, Havam Megandar Ba'afara. This is one of the rabbis of Bavel. When he came to Israel, he rolled in the dust. That's uh, that when in our prayer to Hashem, bring us back to Eretz Israel because even the stones and the, and, the, and the dirt are precious for us. And this is also uh, told about Rabbi Yudah Levi when he came to Israel. And even in our generations, you see people who come from Russia, from Morocco, from, from Yemen, from all over the world, who decide to make Aliyah. The first thing they do when they come down from the plane, from the ship, they bow down and they kiss the ground. Have you ever seen that? It's amazing. They, what? they kiss They kiss the ground. Yes. Yes. So he says, all these, all these wars, all these thoughts, he says, He says, I was... Constantly thinking about them, and 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 I felt the spark like a fire burning in me to go to Eretz Israel. And he says every every holiday we say at the end, Leshana Aba Birushalayim, right? And uh, and every time that he had, he says, every time I had to go arrange uh, some contra- write some contracts or kitubu for people who were on their way to Israel, because he was a scribe. He would be very jealous, very really envious that they go to Israel. Actually, go to and uh, he was really uh, emotional about it. So one time, he's talking to his his cousin, Rabbi Yaakov Mishash, the son of Rabbi David Mishash, and he says he saw that I was so passionate about Israel, so he tried to comfort me. He says, but it didn't help because the message that. Uh, uh, the cousin Rabbi Yaakov gave him he says it seems like God doesn't want our family to go to Eretz Israel because every time they tried to go to Israel there was some impediment and they, which stopped them and uh, he actually had a, uh, a manuscript that was passed down in the family with the details of all these uh, attempts to go to Israel so he says the first, the first one that they know from the family whose name was Zikri ben Meshash, uh, in, in 1713, so 300 years ago, attempted to go to Eretz Israel. It says because the, at that time the Berbers uh, were fighting against the, uh, the city dwellers. It's an inner uh, war, a civil war in Morocco between the Berbers and the, uh, and, uh, and the city dwellers. And he says, uh, and the, the Jews decided, you know, it's about time that we get up and we go to Eretz Israel. And they sold all of their possessions with them, this Rabbi Zikri ben Mishash. And on Rosh Chodesh Iyar, which is the, we just celebrated yesterday, <coughs> the war, a war broke out between the Arabs regarding a woman who was, who was found slaughtered. Uh, her father was one of the vizils, one of the ministers. <coughs> she was tortured and, 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 and killed. And after this war, it was between the Berber tribes and the, and the Arabs. The, the roads were blocked. No one could go anywhere. And, uh, and eventually, when they, when they tried to travel to leave the, the city to go to Israel, they were attacked on the road. They had to go back. They lost all their possessions. And this rabbi, Zikri, uh passed away in 1740 uh, without being able to go to Israel. His son, Rabbi Mas'ud, in 1770, uh, decided again, because his father wrote in the will, you must go to Israel. So we're talking about 1770 is before the major aliyot that started uh, in Europe. And, but this is something you, that usually we don't hear about, that this kind of uh, aliyah that came from Morocco. So Rabbi Masoud uh, l- uh, left Meknes to go to Tangier. And in Tangier, is he... he <coughs> was waiting for a year and a half. 
מבין אלה מלחמות רבות בים וביבשה שהיו בין מלכי אדום. There was a war between the European, the kings of Europe. Later on, the United States also, one of the first wars the United States conducted was against the pirates in North Africa. Okay. Um, so, Libya. Yeah, Libya and Algeria. And, but anyway, he couldn't travel because of the pirates. Uh, three years later, Rabbi Amr ben Diwan came, uh, came from, uh, from Eretz Israel and uh, stayed with uh, Zikri ben Ma- the son of Mas'ud, who, uh, uh, who hosted everyone who came from Eretz Israel. And he says, Bevor Rav Amram Hasida, Lo nimtza beveto ki nasa al-ir fez bishvil asaka, and it achsel etzebeno al-nizkar. But Rabbi Mas'ud was not there, he traveled to Fez for business, and Rabbi Amram ben Diwan gave a sermon בבית הכנסת הגדולה של רבי רפאל ברדוגו, זה צהל. So you know all the names. ורדוגו. ורדוגו is from Portugal, it means one who speaks the truth. They could have been שוחטים, but the name means truth. It's from Verita. So ורדוגו, he speaks in the בית כנסת. דרוש ארוך ונלהב לעורר את הציבור לעלות אל הארץ. So you have to speak about Zionist uh, speeches in 1773 in, Fez, in, uh, in, uh, in, in Tangier. Before the French Revolution. Before. And ונשמעו הדברים לשר העיר ושלחו לפניו, but the, 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 the prince or the governor of the city was not happy, they called him and he called him by Shlomo Mimran. And, uh, and they had to bribe the minister because he was saying, what are you taking away? The Jews had a, a, a status of you know, being a, an economic force in the city. He was not happy with that. And then again, another war broke between uh, the, the local tribes. And Rabbi Amram ben Diwan stays there for eight years. Throughout the war, he couldn't travel. So we're, thinking, we're talking about situations where traveling, you go, if you go from one country to another, you don't know if you could ever come back. Um, So for eight years he stayed in, uh, he stayed in uh, Tangier and he had the yeshiva there with, <coughs> uh, oh no sorry, this whole thing is happening in Meknes, because he went back from Tangier to Meknes, because I looked at the name, uh, with uh, uh, Rabbi David ben Hassin, the famous poet, and Rabbi Mordechai Saban, and then uh, in, uh, 19, uh, in 1781, Finally, there was quiet, and they, uh, the, the grandfather of, of Rabbi Yosef Meshash, uh, Rabbi Mas'ud, sold all of his possessions in order to travel with Rabbi Amram ben Diwan to Eretz Yisrael. He liquidated everything and went to Fez, and they were planning to go from Fez to Algier, uh, to Israel. And, but unfortunately, they just arrived to Fez and, and uh, Rabbi Meshach's grandfather passed away. Got, got sick and passed away. Um, so the, his father, who's still alive, he died in the young age, his father came back, took all of his, uh, his, his, uh, his daughter-in-law and the grandchildren, traveled back to Meknes, and Arab, Rabbi Amram ben Diwan, meanwhile, went, kept traveling through uh, the south of Morocco to Sifru, and from Sifru to Wazan, and he died in Wazan. You mentioned it last week, that Rabbi Amram ben Diwan died in, in Wazan. He's a well-known tzaddik and a great Talmud Hacham, and that's where he's buried. Uh, then, it says, unfortunately, after that, the situation in Morocco worsened until... 1790, the king Muhammad died, and his son Al-Yazid, Mullah uh, Yazid, he calls him Shaykh Tamiya, may his bones be ground in, in Gehinom, because he's known, uh, historian says that uh, Mullah Yazid had a, a mental illness, maybe paranoia, maybe, we don't know what else, schizophrenia, it was very, it was very, it was very violent, it, he tortured people for about two years, um, I think uh, he made, he created a lot of, uh, of trouble, and he says, Kol Yehudei Morocco, are you afkir beat hayalav? The Jews at that time had no, had no rights. They were looting and, and pillaging and raping. And uh, <clears throat> many people left to Algeria and Tunisia. 1791, an earthquake. And uh, there was an earthquake that, uh, that destroyed many cities. 
eventually when uh, uh, Rabbi Meshach's great grandfather passed away, he gave him a tzavah, a will with three uh, requests. One, sheyem mitbodeed im kono sha'ahad b'chol yom b'mahshava zakaot hora l'asot hashbon ha'nefesh sha'ah kvua shelo yivatlena b'shum zman u'b'shum often. This is what he, he wants. The prayers, you know, people do all the prayers. He says, I want you to, for one hour, meditate. Just think about what you do, who you are, how you connect to God. Very important. Bet, sheizaher v'yishtadel lezakot et ha-rabim, o'af yahid, be'ezem mitzvah sh'tiyeh b'chol yom tavid, ve'lo ya'avor ala ba'afu yom ehad b'lizeh. He says, every day try to do something to help others. To help them be better. Tzedakah. Teach them something, even if you influence one person, because whatever it is, if you could do it with the community, fine. With an individual, fine. Very interesting. So it doesn't say, you know, you be you pray more, be more cautious. Take care of the relationship between you and God. Take care of your relationship between you and other people. Gimel, what is the third uh, request? Try to do whatever you can. To go to Eretz Israel, ki avir Eretz Israel kadosh kadosh kadosh. Says the air, even the air there is kadosh. <coughs> and he says, "Siperli rosh hevarat kadisha." The head of the hevarat kadisha, Moshe ben Waish, was there. So you, I'm, I'm saying the next goes. He is very very detailed. He can tell you the dates and the names exactly what happened. He says he was there when. Uh, uh, Rabbi Mas'ud bin Mishash passed away and he repeated those three, com- three requests to his son many many times that was the last words he kept saying the holy land so the last word he uttered was Kodesh holy about Eretz Israel. And Rabbi Yudha Verdugo uh, made the eulogy, and he says his father now uh, tried to fulfill the tzavah, and uh, he prepared himself until, you know, uh, 1820. In the year 1820, there was a, 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 a... We're talking, we started 1713, and every 20, 30 years, they tried to go in another, another war or something happened. And eventually, in, uh, in 1820, he tried to go. Uh, they went to Fez, to Wujda, to Oran, which is in Algeria, and the plan was to go from there to Egypt. And finally, when they get to Wujda, which is in, in Algeria, there was a civil war in Algeria between people of uh, Tlemcen and Oran, and again, uh, had to go back. Uh, he stayed in, uh, in Tlemcen and then went back to Fez. And he tells it in, in, uh, in Ujda. He found peop, uh, people who's uh, uh, Jewish men whose ears were cut. And he asked what happened. He says that when this Mullah Yazid, uh, this violent uh, uh, tyrant, came to, uh, to visit the town, uh, the people came to, to greet him. And at that time, in Algeria was more modern in, in many cases than other places. And Jews and, and, and Arabs dressed the same. There was no distinction between them. And he said, why, why, who are these? The, they, no, they stood separately. They were dressed the same, but they stood Jews and, and Arabs. And so the king asked, why are they standing separately? Who are they? He said, oh, those are Jews, those are Arabs. He says, I can't tell them apart. Uh, and, and he says, the, he tells the governor, so how can I tell them apart? And the governor didn't say anything. And, you know, part of it is because, if you know, you know history, in, uh, there was an, uh, a pact, the Omar pact, one of the early caliphs, made an, uh, a pact according to which the Jews and the Christians are called dhimmi, meaning second-class citizens. And they were required to wear special... Uh, and a lot of historians or people who speak about Jews in Arab land say, you see, the Jews were second-class citizens. But the truth is that for most of the time, in most Muslim countries, those rules were not enforced. And here's an example. Up until the Mullah Yazid was, uh, like I said, was not fully there, people, you know, Jews and, and Muslims, dressed the same. But he, in his cruelty, said, okay, I will give you a way 
to distinguish between them, and and he commanded to cut the ears of all the of all the Jews. So when this happened uh, um, in 1790, and 30 years later, when uh, Rabbi Ben Mishash uh, visits there, he sees only the elders who survived from their terrible story. Uh, he went back to Meknes. He went. He wanted to repurchase his uh, the, the the possession that he liquidated, and. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, the buyer was also a rabbi, so I guess he couldn't uh, he couldn't win uh, you know the the legal argument. Um, and the, the name of the tribe was Itzhak Ibn Tzul, and he said, uh, and he said, you know, the problem is, you want okay, what was his argument? His argument was, it's already discussed in the Gemara that if you if someone sells all of his possessions. It means it shows that he has some he has something in mind because usually people don't do that unless they have a a very uh, clear goal, either to go to another land or they think that they're dying if, uh, they're dying soon. So the Gemara speaks about it. What if someone sold all of his possessions while he was ill and then he recovered? They say it's obvious that he he did that because he thought he's going to die. So everything is reversed. I mean, of course, he has to pay back, but the, the deal is reversed. The same, the, 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 same thing, the same thing applies with someone who was planning to move to another country, and it didn't work for him, and he comes back, and he's allowed to purchase back uh, the, the possessions. But in this case, the rabbi argued, he says, why did you go from uh, Wuzda, which is uh, through the land? You have to go to Rabat, and from Rabat take a, a ship to France, and from there to, to Jaffa. So it's working, the fighting over the itinerary. And of course, back then they didn't have, uh, you know, uh, uh, Orbit and all these, uh, uh, Expedia and all these websites. So, so, a, so they, they start fighting over which road is more dangerous. Like where, where do they have more chances to go to Israel? And two rabbis were on this side, two on the other side. Eventually they, they made arbitration and they settled it. Fine. But again, uh, in 18... back. He, he, he bought back from him some of the possessions. 1840, we're moving on. 1840 is already, uh, you know, in Europe, there's, uh, there's turmoil. Uh, people start coming to Israel, but not the Zionist movement is not, uh, not in place yet. Uh, again, they have this uh, uh, will to go to Eretz Israel. They're, they uh, arranged a caravan to go. But the, the, again, the governor stopped them from going. It's amazing. It's, instead of being kicked out, uh, and the, by the way, it's still true in Morocco that you know in the 1960s, when they were encouraged to go to go to Israel, it was an effort of the government to convince the, the Moroccan Jews to come because other, otherwise, a lot of people would have stayed there. Um, and maybe if maybe if they would have stayed, we're not talking about maybe if they would have stayed. The, the situation of Jews in Morocco today would be a little different because today is not so comfortable. But in any case, back then, the governor stopped them from going because they were uh, goldsmiths and silversmiths and, uh, and tailors and, and the, uh, uh, they were experts. They were craftsmen and they needed them in, uh, in Fez, it says, in Meknes. Uh, but in 1844, he says, 70 people made the, the voyage from Meknes to Eret Israel. And he says, He brings the names with the exactly number of people in each household. I'm, I'm not going to read all the names, there's like the last name. Maman, Ben Itah, Ben Amara, Ben Izri, Raumi, Ragonetz, Ben Zikri. And then he says, Rabbi, uh, Shushana, he says, Abahura Gvir Va Gibor Amitza Leva Measef Lechol Hamachane. It's like, they had one, one young guy who would describe as a hero, uh, courageous uh, man. Kishmo uh, Kenu Azuz, Azuz Al Kobi. Azuz, Az in Hebrew means strong. So Azuz is, uh, is strength and courage. Um, then um, again in, uh, in 1853, he, he mentions more families made from Meknes Abu Dirham, Asabag, Asaban, Hachuel. Shriki, Elbaz, Edra'i, Levi, Alankri, Albo. And here, interesting thing. Ten elderly women uh, traveled. And I know that it was, uh, uh, I heard from, from my wife, that also her great-grandmother made Aliyah 
alone to Eretz Yisrael in the, around the same time in the 1860s or 1870s alone 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 no she she just uh, dressed like she a she dressed no she no. she sewed into her uh, clothes in different hidden pouches uh, money to bribe smugglers along the way she traveled all the way to Eretz Yisrael was very wealthy and she took uh, a lot of what, what she had with her and when she came to Eretz Yisrael she do, when she died, she donated everything to charity in Israel because she was upset at her family that didn't that people didn't go with her, or at least what she wanted that they would let one of her granddaughters go with her, yeah. uh, and which is my wife's uh, grandmother, and she didn't let her go. Um, in any case, so here he speaks about the women. Look at this: is one of the women ve'odi shachachama bechol maase mahat. One of the women was a master uh, uh, embroider. She was uh, an expert in embroider, embroidery. But also a scholar, very learned woman. So this woman knew uh, the Bible, the Mishnah, the Zohar. And she knew all the prayers by heart. Even the Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. Shema, and he goes, her name is Orduinia, a hot Imo Shalaba, she was his, uh, the rabbi's aunt, uh, the daughter of Rabbi Moshe Ulu, and Ben Waish. And then he brings all other families, Tubi, Ben Tulila, Rawaz, uh, Toledano, Bel Hadib. So we see they have all the details of this amazing Aliyah from Morocco and the attempts uh, that they tried to do there. Um, and uh, then he says he heard from his, his aunt. The, who was married to Rafael Maman of Sefo, her name is Gamila. She went back to, to Mecca after her husband died in Sefo, and she said that when her great fa- grandfather passed away, her, his three children, uh, Rabbi Shalom, Rabbi David, and Rabbi Haim Meshash, Rabbi Haim is the father of Rabbi Yosef, uh, they all made a, a, a contract or a pact, a treaty between them. They decided we're all going to go to Eretz Israel, but because of the, eventually there was a war in Israel between the Ottoman Empire and, and, and Egypt, they, they couldn't go. Uh, and uh, that stayed like that until 1885. Another 80 uh, people moved to Eretz Israel. And finally, I'll tell you one, one detail that he tells here uh, in 1899. <coughs> a, a, a large caravan of uh, people from Meknes traveled to Israel. A man who was over 90 years old. This is amazing that you know, a person who's 90 years old wants to travel from Morocco to Israel. Says, <coughs> Look at the verses. Tashkoah vedak vetsanum. He was as if he was weak and elderly, and he was so, he was so thin, he was so uh, emaciated that he, like a like a like a heap of bones. But he wanted to go to Israel. So they they made a special cradle for him, like you do for babies, and they they they, they bundled him and they put him there on on the mule to, to go to Israel. And they, everybody accompanied him. What a great thing uh, to see. And then tomorrow we'll continue. Like, oh, I, this, is, this is where his, his father, behind Mishash, was promised to go to Israel. <laughs>